Welcome, lady and gentlemen, and thank you for being part of this series of interviews. We have four exceptional speakers, Kathleen Rivier smith Kip Meek, Joran Marby, and Philip Mesker. They have important things in common. All of them are former regulators with an experience of more than 15 years in the ICT industry, and all of them have developed their careers in areas related to policy development, regulation, and standardization. Looking back, can you share with us the challenges you identified at this moment and the lessons learned looking on the evolution of the environment? Looking back, it seems like a simpler environment then. Um, the competition was a good way of, of securing the interests of consumers, but in those days, that seemed to work. I think subsequently, and we'll probably get on to this, um, it's become a lot more complicated and difficult, but I think the challenges are a bit tougher now than, than they were. And so, as you know, we're now talking about internet of things, 5G, etc. Back then, we were still struggling with 2G and 3G. And so, we have to enable uh, our, our licensees and our consumers to be able to access services that suit their needs and, and, and make it fit for purpose to survive and thrive in, in this global economy. And I, I think looking back, when, when history is going to look back at the last 10, 15 years, I think it's going to show something that changed un, you know, under our feet without our actually recognizing it, and that was the internet. I mean, first of all, it changed the business models that existed for hundreds of years for the telecom operators, where they became, instead of becoming service providers, they became, um, to, to a large extent, actually providers of a connectivity for someone else to sell the service. So this fundamentally changed how, how regulation works. Internet is a consumer-driven entity. It, it's not so, something that you know, regulators and, and governments said, oh, this is a good idea, let's help the people to have it. It was internet users around people who just went online and started demanding something. When I was a regulator, a lot of discussions was around simple things like how can, how much, how good is this? Today, many of the discussions are actually how bad is this? What challenges can you see related to emerging frontier technologies called by some others? When we look at the history of, of liberalization in telecoms and also uh, what you did as a regulator or did not do, of course, there was the, uh, the phase of enthusiasm about the, the new opportunities, the choices and everything. But it also became evident also uh, from a political perspective and from a user's perspective quite quickly that quality was a key component. So um, the innovation was thriving or is thriving, many uh, new choices, but always the question as well, how good is this? And how safe is it? Um, regulators, of course, need to frame somehow the innovation, but they certainly don't want to stifle the innovation for the future developments. With the complexity which all of you mentioned, where we need to regulate, how we should can cooperate. But technology change per se isn't the thing, isn't the problem that we're dealing with. Because technology change has happened for, for decades, for generations. Uh, but it's the nature of the technology change and that technology change is by definition or, or by its nature um, international and that means that there are no um, national regulatory answers um, and unfortunately there aren't international institutions that are capable of um, <coughs> working out um, how to impose a regulatory regime. In the absence of international uh, institutions that are capable of doing that, co cooperation is the only route. By what mechanism does, does, um, does international collaboration actually translate into uh, real change? Well, it has to be through persuasion, imitation, education, um, which is all about discussion. Definitely, there is always room for regional and international cooperation. We're in a, we're in a global environment. We, no one hand can clap. We, we have to realize that. And if, if COVID-19 hasn't taught us one thing, is that we actually depend on each other. When we speak about the further international cooperation, I think the, the aspect of inclusivity uh, and diversity and also of capacity building 
has a very uh, a key role to play even more going forward. And I think that's where uh, we also have this duty of outreach um, and of uh, helping um, sharing the information and, and, and help building capacity uh, if that is um, appropriate. Um, so regulators are bound by law. Uh, you know, everything you do is bound by law. You know, you, you can't do any outside. But in the world of internet, things happens outside the law. Uh, things happen, sort of new things comes up. And, and here I think there is a gap by a corporation talking to each other and learning because you also have a role to educate your governments and your politicians as being experts of what's happening. Thank you very much to all.